What's good, y'all? It's your boy Fred Marvin Dorsey the Third, and you are watching the Marvelous Channel today. We're talking track, obviously, and the women's 200 meter dash is heating up now. I did tell y'all that someone was gonna run very fast in the 200. Now I had a lot of people tell me, "Oh, Sydney's not a 200 meter runner. Oh, Sydney's not fast enough to do this." Oh, Sydney, what now? What? I told you, as a sprinter, having run so many races myself, having trained for years amongst some of the best sprinters in the world, men and women, after being on the same team as some of the most amazing sprinters, I know what it looks like when a sprinter is about to turn on another gear. And that is what Sydney has just done. Now, her coach has said that he doesn't want her to run the 200 at trials. He wants her to focus on the 400 meter hurdles. Yes, she said during this race that this is just speed work, um, getting used to turnover and being able to come off those last couple hurdles fast. But let me tell you from the mindset of a sprinter, Sydney knows that she's sending a statement to everybody in the track world that she can do whatever she wants to do on the track. She just chooses to bless you and not do the 200 and the 400 so that y'all can win a couple races. Because I'm telling you, if she were to focus on the two or the four, she would be the fastest woman in the world today. Now, I'm not saying fastest all time. Obviously, Flojo is one of the fastest, if not the fastest woman, obviously the fastest woman on the earth that has ever lived. And if she had today's modern technology, yes, I agree, she would be even faster. But we're talking about right now. We're talking about today. And what I'm here to tell you and show you is that Sydney is making a statement that if she's running like this in the 200, she's trying to break 49 in the 400 meter hurdles. It's not a question of will she, it's when will she? Because she will break 49 if she's healthy. Now. After she breaks 49, I really don't know what is there left for her to do in the 400 meter hurdles. I'm telling y'all, I want her to do the two and the four. I'm not her coach. Obviously, her coach is one of the best coaches of all time. So, I can't argue with the man. He knows what he's doing, obviously. But, regardless, she is shaking things up in the 200. Now, in the previous video, I did say that she can compete with the Gabby Thomases, with the Abby Steiners, with the Sherika Jacksons. And I was correct. She just beat Abby, Gabby, and not going to say that she's going to beat Sherika. But if they were to square up, I need to know from y'all, what do y'all think would happen? Is Sydney coming away with the win or is Sherika coming away with the win? And let's say it's the end of the season, it's the Diamond League final, it's after the Olympics, whatever you want to say. Let's say they're both fresh in their prime of the season, they're they're ready to run because Sherika just opened up. And I don't want y'all to be fooled by any manner about Sherika opening up. When, a, when an athlete opens up, it, it, it takes time to get to that point when you when you hot, when you're ready, okay? But let's just talk about what Sydney just did. Now look, she's ready. She's rolling. She's already ran a nice time, you know, 22-3, opened up in 22-3. As people have said, and as I know, she's already opened up this fast before, right? So it's not really a concern of, is she going to run faster? It's like, yeah, she's going to run faster, especially against a heat like this. Look at all these players in this heat. Gabby, you got Jenna Prandini, then you got Abby Steiner. These are like three of the fastest women over the last five, four or five years that have won world championships, done all that. Okay, Abby came to UK after I graduated. So Abby, it was a big thing with Abby because she was a soccer star and a track star. Ended up focusing on track, obviously it was a good decision. Abby is still coming into her own during this season. Abby came off of a, a big injury this past year as well, right? So you got Abby, you got Gabby, and you got Sydney in this race. Plus, you got the, the great Jenna Prandini and all these other ladies who are also good, Kendall Ellis. Great 400 meter runner. Brittany Brown, great 200 to 100 meter runner. Okay? So this is not no, you know, shabby crew. This is a legitimate final. This is the legitimate race. And watch what Sydney does. We're going to break her, her race down. All right. So getting out. I want y'all to hear the announcers. She's in the middle of the pack. But Sydney McLaughlin, they're surprised. has gotten out very well and would lead off the turn. Whoa, look at that lead. 
made for the Olympic champion. Why are we surprised? Why are we surprised? This is one of the fastest athletes on the earth. She's already showed you she can open up with the fastest, the same as the fastest sprinters on the earth right now. So the fact that she's in front, why is everybody so shocked? I'm telling y'all. Let's roll it back and let's show you why she's in front. We already know that Sydney's running form is very smooth. She doesn't do much to slow herself down. There's no, there's no heel striking, no yes. It looks like she's coming down with the heel first, but really she's just getting her knees up so that she can really attack the ground. It's similar to the young man who's running very fast right now, 16 years old, 400 meter runner. Uh, he has a similar foot strike to the ground, but his is a little bit over exaggerated, whereas Sydney's is is kind of just right for her. She's taller. She's probably about five nine, five ten, and so the the foot strike for her is natural, and it, it happens naturally. Her knee drive is for a short. If a shorter athlete would have the same knee drive as Sydney, it would look like the shorter athlete was driving her knees all the way up to the sky. Since Sydney is so tall, she doesn't have to drive her knees all the way to hip length. She can get just as much power going from about where she's driving her knees. Now, when we look at Sherika's tape, you will see that Sherika definitely could get a little bit more out of her knee drive because she runs similar to. There's a lot of like. There's a lot of football players who don't drive their knees up just because in football you have a lot of lateral movements. You got to be ready to make tackles. So you're not necessarily opening up your stride length unless you've got a breakaway, right? So same with basketball players. Basketball players don't typically open up their stride length because they're, they're going only 90 feet, right? It's not necessarily a very long runway for them to run on, a very long track for them to run on. There's no reason for them to open up their stride unless they've got a breakaway. So Sherika could do a little bit better as far as her knee drive because she's so powerful. If she got more knee drive, it'd be very difficult to beat her, which is already difficult to beat her. Now looking at Sydney, if Sydney were to get her knees up to hip length, yes, she would have more power, but she doesn't need to as much because she's getting a little bit more knee drive than Sherika and she's getting enough for herself to push herself down the track. Now, let's just look at the slow-mo, okay? Let's look at it in slow-mo. We already saw what she did. I already saw that she was way in front, okay? We're gonna slow the playback speed down to about 50% and just kind of watch where she's at, okay? Yes, she has a little bit of back kick, but you can see even though her heels are kind of coming down, it's, it's striking on the foot. It's not striking on the heel. Then you see her arm action accelerate. She's driving her arms back vigorously, violently right you see a lot of the other athletes abby has a tendency to abby's kind of more in front she doesn't drive back as hard as she drives forward which works for abby abby runs 21 7 on a great day 21 9 on a subpar day for abby she's a very amazing athlete just looking at the posture this athlete right here back is arched pushing her hips down the track but maybe straining a little bit too much abby good position jenna good position gabby there's days that gabby has an amazing day position wise where she's on top of herself and then there's days where she's kind of sitting you can see that compared to the posture of sydney even this athlete here J jenna and abby gabby's posture is a little bit down her, her hips are angled towards the ground so she's not allowed to get as open of a stride length as she should in order to be able to run fast. So there are days that Gabby does things extremely well and then there's days where her form is just a little bit off and it makes that much difference. Now if we rewind, yes, yeah, Sydney's already gapped them, right? But how does she do that? It's accelerating out of her push and off of the turn. You have to have an open stride length in the beginning of the race and you have to try to gain ground on people while not spinning your wheels too much. So not using your top end speed while you're on the curve because you're gonna spin your wheels and you won't have nothing left at the end of the race. Not saying you should hold back, but you, you should be executing. Do you see how open Sydney's stride length is? She's maximizing her stride length to the point where you can literally see she's fully open, hips fully forward, but her knee drive is she's getting as much as she can and she's pushing her hips down the track 
She's pushing her hips down the track, driving her arms back, which is allowing her feet to come up, her knees to come up. And as soon as she strikes the ground, she does not spend a lot of time on the ground, hits and gets right back off of it. She has accelerated now off of the turn. And now that her stride length has now been established, she is now increasing the speed of that stride length. My coach, Alan Johnson, once taught me it's the same as a car wheel, right? When you're in a car and you're speeding up the car, you press the gas. Do the wheels get smaller? No. Do the wheels get bigger? No. The rate of speed. The wheel stays the same. The diameter of the wheel don't shrink. It's just that the rate of speed is faster now, faster, faster. So when you establish your stride length, you have a, an open stride length. You gain ground just by establishing your stride length. Now you can hit the turnover, but you can do the big circle faster, faster, big circle fast. Remember that this is what Sydney has really become great at. And I think that the reason why Sydney can run so fast so much she's more consistent with than the other athletes in the way that she execute and that happens in practice if you execute this way every rep which is very difficult to do because let me tell you it's tiring to do the right sprint mechanics every single rep you have a you would have a, a desire to slow down in practice you'll have a desire to save energy but you have to, have to, have to execute the right way in practice every day, as many reps as possible, to be able to duplicate it more often than not on the actual race day. This is what Sydney is amazing at. Now, she's speeding up that rate of that stride length. Same stride length, but it's going faster now. Yes, she has a little bit of back kick, but for her, for her as a taller athlete, it's fine. You, you see the Usain Bolts of the world being able to handle the back kick by just focusing on bringing their legs through in the middle yes she has a little bit of back kick but she can still make up for that by attacking the ground being in the right position having the right stride length speeding that stride length up now where Sydney may have a challenge is going up against people like Sherika when Sherika or the mommy rocket are on their game that poses a different threat to Sydney because she won't be the first off the curb so she may have to play catch up as opposed to in this race she was able to dominate because she was essentially the fastest person in the field if you think about 100 meter speed you have to have very fast 100 meter speed to be able to run a 200 now people tell me oh sydney can't run a fast 100 well let me tell you something in college sydney opened up her first 100 that she ran of the, of the entire year, she ran like 11.09. So don't tell me that she doesn't have 200, 100 meter speed. Because in order to run a fast 200, you have to have a fast 100. But it's about speed endurance, not just speed over 100. Which is why many extremely fast 100 meter runners get capped at a certain time for their 200. Because they don't have the speed endurance to be able to hold that speed over time. Sydney being a 400 meter athlete, 400 meter hurdles and 400 meters coming down to the 200 is easier for her to hold her speed because she's used to running 300 meters all out to get to the end of a 400. Then you just put the last 100 on that and you're good, right? So that's why I say Sydney is in position to run faster in the two and the four as well as the 400 meter hurdles which we already know about. But in the two and in the four, she's well positioned to run fast because of the way that she trains. She's training a further distance than most. She's working on her mechanics throughout a 300 meter, 400 meter type of workout. And so when she comes down to the two, if she's on her speed work, if she's on her game, if she can accelerate off of the curve, if she can hold her top end speed, you're gonna see times like 22.07, times like 21.9, 21.8.